What if I told you that Reiner did nothing wrong? A mix of perspective and context proved that the storytelling innovations put on display by Attack on Titan forced the viewer into acknowledging Reiner as a justified individual in a horrific situation. Welcome to Figuring Out Fantasy, where we'll be going over Reiner's destruction of the inner gate to Wall Maria, and how, given the overarching context presented later in the series, he wasn't at fault. If you have some thoughts, be sure to leave them in a comment, and if you want, you could even hit subscribe to make this silly little bar just a bit bigger. Reiner is a polarizing character to say the least. Some though came around to the sentimental moments shared by him and so many characters as he evolved as a person. Even in his iconic warrior speech atop Wall Rose, many had a hard time understanding the gravity of just what was happening, as his motivations in being a part of the Survey Corps were so easy to become attached to, being that his true home lay beyond the walls. Which he wasn't lying in this phrasing, but to gain the ability for us to understand just what his home and origins were, we'd have to wait a sheer four seasons down the road. This lack of context cemented Reiner and Berthold as, in many eyes, the true villains of the series. And this was even further hammered in from their constant pursuit of compromising the integrity of wall by wall in an effort to retrieve the Founding Titan from Eren. This is play by play pulled from Reiner by Eren all the way out in Season 4, as Reiner tells his side of the story in one of the most intense scenes you'll ever see. Reiner tells Eren that his objective was to claim the Founding Titan and save the world. With Zeke in his ear, I don't doubt that he's being entirely genuine here. Eren goes on to tell Reiner that they're the same, confused by the propaganda around them which propped those across the sea in both minds up to be devils deserving of any and all suffering that would be placed upon them. But Reiner seems to disagree. He claims that he is the one to blame for the fall of Wal Maria in the very beginning, and that he was a key part in ensuring that the mission was completed encouraging Annie and Bertholdt to continue after losing their dear friend Marcel. But why shouldn't he have? In order to answer that question though, let's go back to the reason why Marley is a flip side of parody in the first place. 2000 years ago, when King Fritz split Ymir's titan powers into nine hosts of her own children through rather grotesque means, he used this newfound war power to dominate Marleyan land until they became an unmatched world factor. Marley is later able to gain control of many of these titans after the kingship is shifted to the Reese family, who backs out of the conflict entirely and moves across the sea to the island of Paradis, guiding countless colossal titans towards this destination and constructing the three walls Maria, Rose, and Sheena. Now here is where the most pivotal moment occurs. The king, using the power of the founding titan, wipes the memories of all those within the walls, convincing them that they're the only humans left on earth. From this moment on, we have an almost identical perspective on the world outside the walls as the characters we're introduced to have, and it's this aspect of being left in the dark that gives the viewer the impression that Reiner is the villain in this situation. From childhood, Reiner along with Berthold and Annie had been training to become warriors so that they can grant their families the ability to live as honored members of the Marleyan society being that their children were setting out to be heroes, even though they were Eldians in the first place. Similar to the instances we see in the first season with the propaganda that's being spread amongst the inhabitants of Parody concerning the origins of the walls that entrap them from the outer world, these children dealt with an iteration of that, but in a different goal of making those within the walls out to be devils. Knowing this, I'll ask you again, why wouldn't Reiner want to push on after Annie and Berthold wanted to turn back? He was trying to be a warrior, and claiming the Founding Titan from within the walls no matter the cost was, in his and many across the sea's eyes, the morally just action to take, and one that was able to unite an entire nation at that. Everything proves Reiner's decision to be, while unspeakably devastating to those within the walls, influenced from being desensitized to the horrors that he would be causing. Every last one of those human beings on parody were devils and nothing else, according to the perspective possessed by each and every Marleyan around him growing up. But this is one of the most gripping conflicts in all of Attack on Titan, and it tips off at a climactic moment that I even covered in depth in another video on my channel. Reiner and Berthold, after gaining access to the Survey Corps through training undercover for the scouts, much to their confusion, began to develop connections to those fighting alongside them. Sharing life-saving moments towards one another, it was inevitable that these now teenagers would be so influenced by the morale of those around them. Reiner specifically felt accepted for once, as even in Marley, he derived this desire to be a notorious warrior in the pursuit of being accepted by those around him. Now I'll present the dilemma again. 
Knowing the context of Reiner and Marleyan in general's upbringing, do you truly blame him for continuing on and taking the action he did? Reiner faces a tragic fate as he was only able to be thrusted into the situation which revealed the Eldians as normal humans through taking the point position and breaking through their walls and initiating the undercover operation. Reiner was learning the truth concerning the nature of the harmless Eldians only after he put this monumental responsibility on his shoulders from devastating the outer and inner gates of Wall Maria. And in the desire to infiltrate the Survey Corps, he only made himself more and more vulnerable to being forced to feel guilt towards his actions. And Reiner was as weak of a candidate as it gets when it comes to keeping his emotions out of things. His previously mentioned lack of feeling a part of something wasn't satisfied by the destruction of the walls. It was only satisfied by the camaraderie and progression of becoming a man through his participation in the Survey Corps. The longer he stays within the walls and continues to alter his headspace, the more guilty and heavy-hearted he'll feel. This is clearly shown later in the series as he hasn't quenched his thirst for redemption. The more he comes to terms with what he's done, the more he realizes he can't surmount the devastation that he was instructed to do. The viewer even begins to see Reiner in a sort of protagonist role as we root for him to find his place back on the team of scouts and conquer the turntables that Eren is thrust into play. Again, it's hard to see how we can call Eren and Reiner the same when we see how both react to understanding the consequences of their actions. Eren even had the advantage of seeing people's reactions to what the rumbling would do much further in advance. Until he awakens his latent memories from touching history as hand, we see him as a victim fighting back against his environment and those who have done him wrong. But as soon as he understands the gravity of what he's supposed to see through, Eren doesn't hesitate and pushes for this new idea of freedom. Reiner was only able to glean the insight that Eren possessed in terms of resulting damage from their respective attacks after he executed on it in the first place. For Reiner to be so tripped up on his decision making proves further that he was one of the most confused in the entire series even though we see him as operating behind the scenes once he betrays the scouts initially. Reiner may have caused lifelong hurt, but he was the farthest from at fault. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the rest of my channel, and consider leaving a like and subscribing, as it really helps me out. Thank you.